rotational motion or circular motion. You guys are going to have some book work over these notes on Monday, so please bring your textbook to class. And um, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to um, begin by discussing what rotational motion is. Now, up until this moment in physics, we've just been looking at objects that are moving in a straight line. Now, projectiles are kind of uh, going in a curved path, but they're really traveling in two directions at one time. But when you're talking about something that's moving in a circle, it's a whole new ballgame. Um, kind of. Now, when we have things that are going off uh, at angles, we've been using degrees for all of our measurements. When we're dealing with objects that move in a circle, we need to be using radians instead of degrees. Um, it's a little bit more accurate, it's a little bit of a better way to describe where the object is traveling if we use radians. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have gotten to the unit circle yet in math, but um, we're going to do a little bit of practice taking um, a degree measurement and converting it into a radian. So uh, what a radian is, is it is a fraction of a circle, and there are 6.28 radians in one complete circle. So we also say that that's 2 pi. So 2 pi radians is 360 degrees all the way around the circle. Consequently, halfway around the circle would be 180 degrees, and that is equal to 3.14 radians, or pi. Now, you can take any angle measurement, and you can convert these into radians by just multiplying the angle by pi over 180. So usually we use our, um, we express radians as multiples of pi. It's okay if you don't. If you, um, you can write in your answers 2 pi or 6.28, uh, and it'll be acceptable. Um, this is the unit circle, and I can't remember for the life of me if you guys learned this in pre-cal or if it's algebra 2. I want to say it's algebra 2, but I'm not entirely positive. Um, you don't need to memorize this, although you do for math but you don't for my class, you really just need to know that 2 pi is 360 degrees, or 6.28 radians, and 1 pi is 180 degrees. Everything else you can figure out from there. Um, just know this is 180, this is 360, and you're going to be good to go. Okay, angular displacement. Now, if you guys remember from before, uh, when we first started the year, we talked about displacement, and we talked about velocity, and we talked about acceleration. All of those terms and expressions that we were using before, we were discussing objects that move in a straight line. So we were looking at linear motion before. Now things that move in a circle, or a rotational motion, they experience all of these things too. They experience a displacement, a velocity, an acceler and an acceleration. But now, instead of calling them linear values, we're going to call them angular values. So it's the same concept. Angular displacement is the same thing as linear displacement. So linear displacement, right, remember, was how far you ended up from where you started. If you started at x1 and you moved to x2, well, then this is going to be your displacement. Same thing for angular displacement. But now, you're starting here, and you're traveling in a circle. So how far around that circle did you go? That's what angular displacement is going to describe. Same thing with angular velocity. How fast are you going in a circle? And then angular acceleration. How fast are you accelerating in a circle? So really, this stuff is nothing new. Um, the weirdest thing is probably the, the displacement one, and I'll explain that in a second. But um, these two are essentially the same. Velocity is still change in distance over time, and acceleration is still change in velocity over time. You're just going in a circle now instead of going in a straight line. Um, so we have to express our numbers a little bit differently, but conceptually it's the same. So let's go back to this idea of angular displacement, um, and let's talk about why it's so important that um, we have special terms for this stuff. So let's say that I told you that my linear displacement um, was 10 meters. Okay, well, you can pretty much picture that in your brain, that I started at some point, and then I'm going to end down here some point 10 meters away. Now, that 10 meters, you might not know the exact direction that I'm talking about, um, but you're going to have a rough idea. 
that I'm going to end up exactly 10 meters away from where I started in some direction. Now, if I told you that my angular displacement was 10 meters, well, um, that makes it a little bit more difficult because if I asked you guys to draw me an angular displacement of 10 meters, everyone's going to have a little bit different picture. Why? Because one person might say, okay, well, traveling in a circle for 10 meters, that's going to take you here. Another person might say, traveling in a circle for 10 meters, okay, well, that's the entire circle all the way around. How do we know? We don't know because saying angular displacement of 10 meters um, doesn't tell us anything about the size of the circle. We don't know, did those 10 meters take you all the way around? Did those 10 meters take you halfway around? We also need to know a little bit about the radius of the circle so we have a better idea of what it actually means to travel those 10 meters. So when we figure out angular displacement, um, we need to look at the distance from the axis, how far away you are, oops, how far away you are from the center, right, that's going to be your radius. And then we also need to look at what's called the change in your arc length. Um, if you guys remember from geometry, this little section of the circle here that's labeled S in this picture, this is called the arc length. So how far did you travel along the circumference of the circle? And how far are you away from the center? Now those two numbers, when we divide them, it'll give us the angular displacement in radians, which is a much better description for us than to say that I traveled 10 meters in a circle. If you discover that your angular displacement is 3.14 radians, then you know you went halfway around the circle. Alright, so angular displacement is positive when we go counterclockwise and negative when we go clockwise. Um, it's just a convention that your book sets. It's probably going to be important for your practice problems. So let's do an example real quick. Um, it says, while riding on a carousel, rotating clockwise, a tra child travels through an arc length of 11.5. Child's angular displacement is 165. What is the radius of the carousel? So here are our values. 165 degrees is the angular um, is the angle mo uh, measurement. 11.5 is your arc length. And we want to know how big the carousel is. So first things first. We have a degree measurement, and that's not going to work for what we're going to do with angular motion. So we need to convert that into radians. So to do that, we're going to take the degrees and multiply it by pi over 180. Very, very simple. Then we get a radians of 2.88 radians, so almost halfway around the carousel. Once we figure that out, then we can use angu the angular displacement equation to solve for our radius. So this is our angular displacement equation. We figured out our angular displacement from the angle that we traveled was 2.88 radians. Then, our arc length is 11.5, and we can solve for our radius. That means the radius of our ride is about 4 meters. Angular displacement, remember guys, this is just like regular displacement. It's describing how far around the circle you traveled. Alright, angular speed. Angular speed is the same thing as regular speed or regular velocity. Um, it describes how fast you're moving in a circle. So the unit is in radians per second. So radians has kind of taken the, the place of meters in our math from now on. So angular speeds sometimes are given in revolutions per second. So a revolution is one full time around. So one revolution would be 2 pi radians or 6.28 radians. OK, so here is your equation, symbol, and example. For angular speed, we use this funky looking W thing here. And the W is equal to the change in displacement over time, just like velocity has always been. So let's look at our example. Todd Ice Cream Parlor spins on a stool. He spins counterclockwise with an angular speed of 4 radians per second. In what time interval will the child's feet have an angular displacement of 8 pi radians? So essentially they're telling you this is how fast the kid is going. How long is it going to take the kid to go four times around a circle? because 8 pi radians would be 4 times around the circle. Alright, so here are our givens. We have an angular speed of 4, angular displacement of 8 pi, and we want to know what our time is. 
So, just like before, 4 equals 8 pi divided by t. So t is equal to 2 pi, or 6.3, 6.287s. All right, angular acceleration is the last one, and this is, of course, just like I mentioned before, like regular acceleration is change in velocity over time. So angular is change in angular velocity over time. So whenever the speed of an object going in a circle is changing, that's when we have angular acceleration. So here's a quick example. We have a car tire with an initial speed of 21.5. Um, the driver accelerates, and 3.5 seconds later, the speed is 26. What is the tire's average acceler angular acceleration? And I don't know if I have a solution for this one. Okay. So for this one, um, again, pretty straightforward. We have our angular acceleration, which we use out lowercase alpha for that, equals change in angular speed over time. So the final speed is 26, the initial angular speed is 21.5, and the time is 3.5 seconds. So when we do that, we get the answer to be 1.9 radians per second squared. So it's really important to remember that um, what I've showed you guys is really nothing new. Y'all already understand the concept of velocity, acceleration, and displacement. Now we're just sticking it in a circular uh, frame of reference instead of in a straight line. So for every equation we've learned, there is a circular um, component for it. And so over here, we have our linear equations, which we learned velocity is change in displacement over time. And angular speed is change in dis angular displacement over time. Same thing with the angular acceleration and the linear acceleration. So you guys can kind of see where I'm going with this and the idea that um, all of those kinematics equations that we learned, those can be uh, used for circular motion as well. Um, so here we go. This one is ooh, probably y'all's favorite. Final equals initial plus at. This one's the same thing. Final equals initial plus at. Like I said before, the only difference is that now you're moving in a circle, and now everything needs to be in radians instead of meters. And here is meters. All right. So let's do a kinematic example. Um, so let's say you have a bicycle upside down, you're fixing it or repairing it or whatever, and it's going to move through 11 radians in two seconds. What is the wheel's angular acceleration if its initial angular speed is 2? So moving through 11 radians, you can think in your head and say, okay, that's about a little bit less than two times around. And you guys will get the hang of it the more that you, you uh, do circular measurement. Um, but, you know, twice around is about six and a half. I mean, I'm sorry, twice around is about 12 and a half, so 11 radians is a little bit less than twice around. And what is the wheel's angular acceleration? So let's write down everything that we know, just like we always did with kinematics, and you guys should be total pros at kinematics by now. Um, so the initial angular speed is 2, the angular displacement is 11. This is like our distance, remember? Our time is 2 seconds, and we want to figure out what our angular so let's think about uh, our kinematics equations, and we can see that this is the one that we want to use. The change in displacement equals initial speed times time plus one half at squared. So, oops. all right. So let's plug in what we know. Displacement is 11. Initial speed is two. Time is two. One half a two seconds squared. 11 radians, then, is going to be equal to 4 plus 1 half a times 4. And 7 radians equals 2 times a. That gives you your acceleration of 3.5 radians per second squared. Um, so that's all I have for you guys. And please remember to bring your textbooks. And I will uh, see you guys when I get back.